low arch, standard F hole placement. Higher arch and uh, higher upper uh, bout, standard F hole placement. Low arch, oval hole, transverse brace. Recordings played with the uh, wonderful Chris Thiele signature pick that came to me courtesy of Ben Wimhoner at Springfield Music. Hey, uh, I, I need to stop in and buy like five of these. these this is great. Uh, it actually goes in my leather pick pouch on my keychain so that I don't lose it in the, uh, the laundry. All right, that being said, uh, this is the... Uh, I made a template of this top plate uh, for all my future mandolins for my copy carved machine. And because uh, uh, I like the scroll and I like the low arch, uh, lower arch, you get a little more flexibility out of the top. So you get a little more harmonics and a little more low end. Still, though, uh, with the F holes, uh, you are cutting out a lot of the surface area that can vibrate. So you limit a lot of the bass response, allocate a lot to the treble. It's a stiffer top because of the tone bars shoots a lot of the tone forward. However, if you're playing in a band with a lot of musical instruments and you want your tone to jump out, uh, you might like the uh, choppier, uh, less sustain-filled uh, sound out of an F-hole with a lower arch. Uh, you take that to an extreme. If you really want the sound to, uh, to jump out and cut out, you go with the, something a lot thinner. It's very bright, not a lot of low-end. Um, Preferably, I don't really like the sound of this one at all, uh, which is why I don't make high arches anymore. If you're playing at home and you just want a big, full sound, sounds huge to your ear here. Uh, it's almost like a little blanket over the sound hole. Uh, but all the tones are they're darker, but they're not muddier. There's more sustain. So when you're playing by yourself at home, it just really fills in all the spaces. Uh, if you're playing classical music, I jump to something like this uh, to give each note this big, full vibrance. Um, but again, if you're playing in a big orchestra and uh, you know, like a banjo and upright bass and a couple of guitars, and you want something to jump out and have its own voice, probably go with the F hole. If you're just uh, wanting something to sound as big as possible in a smaller ensemble, I'd go with something like this. That being said, the F-hole instruments, we can make them sound a little bigger. We can make the body depth deeper. We can actually move the F-holes uh, out a bit, make them smaller. 
and push them out to the sides a little bit more, which will increase the surface area, which will allow us to have more bass response. Uh, again, you know, like a big xylophone bell gives you a bassier tone. Uh, you just have to have that kind of big surface uh, area to to hold up to the longer wavelength of the the bass notes. And you get you get that with this because you got a whole lot of surface area that's unobstructed. <laughs> You don't have that with the F's, but with the F's you have a lot of energy that's pushing the, the fundamental bright pitches that come out of the instrument forward. So that's food for thought. Remember that it is uh, Pygmalion. You can't not design the perfect woman. And uh, if you tried to, three weeks later, you'd find out she d divorced you and ran off with your dentist or something like that. Uh, Pygmalion, it's an old Greek story about a man who tries to invent the perfect woman. Mandolins are the same way. They're just like women. Look it up. It's in the Bible. All right, uh, hope that helps you, and uh, I'm going to put these things away. Thanks, Ben. I love this pick.